Hey, how's it going? Do it yourself first. Got a good one for you today. Today I'm going to show you how you can diagnose a bad throttle position sensor without a wiring diagram. Now most throttle position sensors, which in our case is this guy right here, have three wires, but this one's got four wires. But we'll explain that as well. So we're going to be doing this on this 1983 Lexus LS400. And the symptoms we're having on this car is at lower speeds and lower engine RPMs. It's okay, but as soon as you step on the gas, try to raise the engine RPM, the car starts to hesitate, you know, the RPM fluctuates up and down, and also the check engine light comes on. Now this is a 93, so it's pre-OBD2, so our OBD2 scanner is no good, but it does have a diagnostics port, and if you jump two pins on that, your check engine light will flash and give you a code. So we did that, and we got code 41, which is for the throttle position sensor. All right, now before we get into diagnosing this problem, here's a quick description that you need to know on how your throttle position sensor works. And also just to be clear, this procedure is gonna work on throttle position sensors that work with a mechanically controlled throttle plate by the way of this cable, as you see, as is the case on this case, this is not gonna apply to throttle plates that work by wire, or in other words, electronically controlled by an electric motor. All right, so again, usually you'll have three wires going through your throttle position sensor. All right, so out of the three wires, one of them is gonna be your reference voltage, usually five volts coming from your car's computer. The other one is gonna be your grounding wire, grounding that circuit and completing that circuit. And then the third wire is gonna be your signal wire, sending a varying signal in the form of varying voltage from your throttle position sensor. And that varying voltage obviously depends on how far or wide your throttle plate is opening back to your car's computer, letting it know how much air is getting through the throttle body into the engine, and therefore your course computer will know how to adjust the fuel injectors, ignition timing, all that good stuff. Here on this diagram, you can make sense of it even easier. You got the firewall reference going to your throttle position sensor. You got the ground, and then as that throttle position sensor moves up and down, the signal changes and then goes back to your course computer. Now, this is how most throttle position sensors work, but this car has four wires going to the sensor. Now the fourth wire on this setup is for what Toyota calls the idle switch. So yeah, this fourth wire on this setup basically has 12 volts coming from your car's computer. Now when the throttle plate is closed, this switch, this 12 volts is also closed and it's grounded at your throttle position sensor. When this is grounded, that 12 volts drops to zero and then your car knows that the throttle plate is closed and it will activate your idle air control valve. And then when you step on the gas and open the throttle plate, the switch opens, this goes back up to 12 volts, and that's how the computer knows that the throttle plate just opened. But again, you know, if you have a throttle position sensor, the odds are you just need to worry about these three wires. All right, so enough of that. Now let's get on to figuring out how to diagnose our throttle position sensor. In order to do that, we need to figure out which wire is what. So first thing we're gonna do, turn the key to the on position, and then we're gonna remove the connector from our throttle position sensor. So here's our connector. We're gonna get our black test lead and ground it at a good ground, preferably our battery. Make sure to set our multimeter to 20 volts on the DC scale side. And then we're gonna probe these pins and we're basically looking for our five volt reference voltage and also the 12 volts for the idle switch on this car. If this was three wires, again, you'd just be looking for the five volts reference voltage. And we'll start from the left, keep track. So there we go, the first one on the left, we got five volts. We'll make a note of that, make, so we'll make a note of that. We we'll go to the second one. We got 1.6 volts. That's the bias voltage for our signal wire coming from the computer more than likely. And the third one, there we got close to battery voltage, 10.5 volts. That's probably the idle switch, the 12 volts for the idle switch. And this last one, we should have no voltage and that's probably our ground. So the first one is the five volt reference, the middle one probably our signal wire, third one. Third one is the 12 volts for the idle switch. Last one is ground, we can check and make sure that's, that has ground by switching our multimeter to the continuity test and if we touch that, make sure you don't test any of the other pins for continuity to ground. There, we got continuity to ground so that we just confirmed this fourth one is our ground wire. All right, so we just confirmed a bunch of things without the wiring diagram. We confirmed that we have the five volt reference voltage. We know which pin that is. And also we found out which one is the ground. We also have the 12 volts idle. I should say almost 12 volts for the idle switch. And then also we found the signal wire as well. So next we're gonna back probe the signal wire with the connector back on the throttle position sensor. And then check and make sure we have good signal coming out of the throttle position sensor. All right, so here I got my back probe in. This was the second pin that we tested. So we'll put the connector 
Back on our throttle position sensor. So now with the connector back on, out of the signal wire, you usually get something like this. You'll get a reading. It would be like something like, you know, 0.5 something, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, up to maybe even one volt. And this is with the throttle plate closed. All right, so next I'm gonna open the throttle plate slowly and watch this voltage and it should go up, you know, smoothly. It shouldn't spike up and down and or, you know, go way down and come back up. But I'll probably fast forward through this and this voltage should go up to close to four volts or so, maybe even more. But yeah, I'll fast forward through this because I don't think you guys have the patience of watching this go up. All right, so we got to wide open throttle. We're at 3.8 volts. There was no big drops or big spikes. So now we're just gonna come back down slowly. Hopefully we'll see something there. I don't want to have to break out the lab scope for this. All right, so we came all the way back down. No spikes, no drops, nothing. Or here's something that might help our situation, and that is, you know, just grab a screwdriver, anything really. Then you tap the sensor and see if that voltage changes. And then if it doesn't, you tap it while you're opening the throttle plate as well. Uh, nothing on the way up. Now we're gonna go back down. Nothing. What the hell, man? All right, I need to dig into service data. I'll be back. All right, so looking on service data for detecting conditions for this code, there are two conditions where you get this code to set. The first condition is if you have an open or short in the throttle position sensor circuit signal for 0.5 seconds or more. The second condition is if the idle switch contact is on and signal output exceeds 1.5 volts for 0.5 seconds or more. Let me translate that into English. All right, so basically they're saying on the signal wire or the signal voltage, which is the one we just tested, if the voltage shorts, basically drops to zero, or it's an open circuit where the bias voltage is not grounded, for 0.5 seconds or more, that code will set. That's unlikely to be our cause because we just tested it with the multimeter. Unless this is an intermittent problem, that's unlikely to be the, the, the cause of our code. The second condition is when our idle switch voltage is grounded when you're getting 1.5 volts or more. Now, when the throttle plate is closed, we're getting 0.7 volts. As we open the throttle plate, that would go to 1.5 volts that means that throttle plate is open and this shows closed where this voltage drops and shows closed to the computer. If that's the case, the computer is going to freak out, probably do the, you know, the hesitating thing because it, you know, sees that the throttle plate is open yet this contact is closed, showing the throttle plate should be closed and at idle. So we're going to test that next. That's probably our problem. All right, so we'll remove our connector and we're going to back probe our 12 volt idle switch uh, pin, which again was the third pin on this connector. So we'll just move this one over. All right, so with the connector back on the sensor, the throttle plate is closed. That contact should be also closed, pulling that 12 volts or 10.5 volts in our case to zero. So we should show no voltage. We do not. And then if I open the throttle plate, we should go to battery voltage. If I close it, Back down to zero, back to battery voltage. Oh, where's my screwdriver? Let's see. Oh, 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 there we go. Think I see our problem. You guys see the 0 0.8, 0 0.7 voltage? Or three or one point something voltage now? That shouldn't be, this should be just a switch. It should either be closed or open, but I can with the throttle plate, if I hold it really steady, I can get it to stay at 1.8. If I push it a little bit more, three point something, two point something, and I can keep it at that voltage. Yeah, it shouldn't be work. This is not a potentiometer, it's just an on off switch. It shouldn't be working like that. All right, now doing more research, a lot of people are saying that it's the car's computer that goes bad on these cars and can throw a code this code, code 41 for the throttle position sensor and 
where they're having the problem is that they're not getting 12 volts for the idle switch. Now we're getting 10.5 volts. That's just close, close enough to a battery voltage. And also it's because the battery is kind of drained on this car. But that's a concern, but that switch should not be working like that. It should just be on and off. And that's why I feel kind of comfortable making the call on the throttle position sensor. Going to go to the store, pick one up, we'll be back. All right, so back from the store, got our new throttle position sensor. These are somewhat adjustable, just in case you need to adjust them. And the way they work is that they, you know, hook up to the throttle, the, the piston that goes through the throttle plate, and then this switch, as you move the throttle plate, this changes, the resistance changes, the varying signal, so on and so forth. So we're going to do a quick test, actually. We're going to remove this connector. And then we'll install the new crankshaft position sensor back on. See our voltage drop down to zero because this is closed all the way. Then we are going to, or I'm going to, start to slowly, pretty much the same thing we did, but you know, without this thing on the car. Start, start to slowly open this. Okay, so it went back to battery voltage now that it's not grounded. And I'm gonna start to slowly close it back down. Basically, I'm trying to see if I can get this to stick to like one point something volts or four points something volts, see? So this is where, oh, see, for a split second it goes to, but that's normal, you know, I cannot, you know, it can't go zero on the multimeter, go from zero volts to 12 volts straight. You know, it just, for, for a fraction of a second, less than 0.5 second volts, it will, it will do that. But it's, I cannot make this to stay at a voltage that's not either pretty zero, close to zero, or battery voltage. As soon as I move this one way or the other, See, it switches. Doesn't matter how slowly I do this. Obviously, when you're pressing this, the, the gas pedal, you're not doing it as slow as I am, but it doesn't matter. I cannot make this to be anything besides zero or 12 volts. So, yep, this is a good, this, and then just to show it to you guys again, we'll put the connector back on the old sensor and then do the same thing, slowly opening the throttle plate and there, see, I can make it I can make it stay at a lower voltage or a higher voltage, between zero and 12 volts. I can make it stay at 4.8, 4.9 volts. So yeah, this shouldn't be working like that. It should be just an on off switch. We have a proper diagnosis of the throttle position sensor. All right, so this video turned out to be a little bit more complicated than it probably needed to be for a throttle position sensor diagnosis. Most cars, again, will have the three wires. Others will be a little bit more different, like in this case. But I think it's important for people to understand how to diagnose every part correctly on their car because in this case, you could get a 41, code 41 for the TPS, yet it's, yet it's your computer not sending that 12 volts to the idle switch that's part of the throttle position sensor. And actually what I think happens on this, this, these cars specifically, the LS400s, is that, that the throttle position sensor goes bad first and then people ignore it because with that bad, it only comes on when you step on the gas a little bit. You could drive the car around town without a check engine light and you'd be okay once in a while. They probably, you know, step on the gas a little bit. The, the check engine light comes on, the car hesitates, goes, you know, the RPM fluctuates. So then they back up, they back off the gas, they drive, it's okay. But every time they do that, I think what happens is that they're damaging the, the, the pin, the circuitry for inside the ECM that sends out that 12 volts to the TPS for the idle switch. So every time they do that, they damage that and they eventually will have a bad, throttle position sensor and a bad computer. So that's why one of the, some of the people online, they suggest replacing the computer. I'm pretty sure most of them will also have to replace the TPS as well. So yeah, don't ignore your check engine lights is what I'm saying, all right? So if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you wanna see more like it, check out these other videos that are gonna be on this side of the screen. Also my videos in the suggestion box, links in the description box as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.